baby. We're back. We never left. Welcome back to another episode of BPM Podcast. Buenas noches. I might have said buenos dias, buenos noches, buongiorno. What else is bon dia? Bon dia. That's Brazilian. Buongiorno is Italian, I think. You know. Top of the morning. That's like top of the morning is like Irish, isn't it? Top of the morning, you all. Um Welcome back to another episode of the BPM, motherfuckers. You know? What you guys been doing? What illegal activities you've been partaking lately? You know, which ones do you like the most? Which ones give you the most money? I'm drinking some coffee because it's early. I watched yesterday. I'm driving to work and it's not very late. It's like 930 in the morning. I'm driving. And I see this girl, which I think. She's driving a big SUV, no window tent, and she's a couple cars ahead of me, but on the, I'm in the middle lane, she's on the left lane, and I'm like, this bitch is doing her makeup, she's gonna crash, right, so I think she's doing her makeup because she's doing this hand motion, and she has a paper in front of her, I'm like, oh, she's just probably, you know, so I pull up, we, we stop at the light, and I'm right next to her, guess what this bitch was doing? Smoking pills. She had a piece of foil paper and a straw in her mouth. And a lighter underneath. And she was like holding the pipe with her mouth. Lighting the fucking pill. And following the smoke. And then she looked at me and smiled. <laughs> She's like, hell yeah. We're about to get this shit. And of course she was Caucasian. You don't have to guess. Caucasian. They love, love smoking pills. They can't say no. <laughs> uh, and I was just like, what the fuck? That's somebody's mom. There's a car seat in the back. That's an SUV. You know, they want a brand new SUV. But this bitch is somebody's mom. Somebody's, she's out here fucking wilding. And I know she just copped because where I live, let me tell you, I live in a ghetto. I live in a ghetto. Where I live is, I live right behind, or right in front, or right in between one of the most expensive neighborhoods in Tucson, right? Because it's, like, where the town started. Like, I'm central, like, real central. So, like, uh, the Miramonte, that's what it's called. The neighborhood is called Miramonte, and it's pretty, it's, like, a couple miles wide, a couple miles I don't know how to say this. Well, there's a lot of expensive shit around me. Just not my shit. You know what I'm saying? That's what I'm trying to say. So there's a lot of old money around the neighborhood. But you go a little bit south of the major street. Or a little north of the major street. Boy. I've seen two ladies fighting for a shopping cart. I... I let me rephrase that. There were not ladies. <laughs> a lady wouldn't fight for a shopping cart full of trash, right? But they were going at it and they were yanking on the fucking on the um, on the shopping cart and one of them let go, the other one fell. She got on top, started like try to get on her, right? But she didn't do much. And I just honked on them. I'm like, hell yeah, I got five on you with the fucking ripped shirt and the fucking panties. They both looked at me and continued to bang in on each other. We come to this country. Well, I came to this country for a better life. You know what I'm saying? And all of a sudden, what is going on? Like, I don't ever remember being this bad. Everybody's crying. The gas prices. The, gas, the fucking gas prices goes out every other year. Every other time, it, like, it goes up. Stop crying, right? I put 35 bucks in my tank. If he doesn't get full with that, that's his fucking problem. Not mine. He can go fuck himself. You think I'm going to spend my fucking hard-earned money on him? No. Fuck him. But... 
just to like why is everybody crying that's what i'm saying i'm crying right now i'm not even crying in the sense of like i'm going to this is such a hard life uh, i'm going to go do drugs I want to go do drugs to have fun. I don't want to go do drugs because I'm sad. Fuck that. You know? I want to go do drugs because, like, it's the thing to do. Fuck yeah. Give me some. Give me some. Some of that heroin. Black tar. I tell people that all the time. Like, I fucking wish I could do heroin and not be addicted to it. They're like, you can't do that. I'm like, why not? Everybody's so scared of heroin. Like, what's the big deal? You fucking pass out. You're just not. You know, real fucking man do that shit. I met this guy that he would work construction and smoke fucking rock like he was in the fucking 60s. No, like he was in the 80s. The 80s, the rock was big in the 80s, right? The rock was big in the 80s. So he would smoke rock every day, but every day he went back to work, which is crazy. He's like, this shit keeps me fucking going. It gives me motivation. I'm like, okay, cool. And he would smoke. The smell of rock burning, it's a it's a different smell. It's it's something you can't just get out of your head. It's like when you walk past somebody smoking weed, you're like, ha ha ha. They got good shit or they don't got good shit. They, you can smell it, right? They got that skunky shit, ugh. That Reggie shit, ugh. You gotta get some of that California love, baby, in your lungs. I'm just playing. I don't even smoke weed, but he did it for years. I met, I, I knew this guy for at least four years, and those four years, I was always wondering. I'm like, how the fuck does this dude is doing push-ups in the middle of the night? <laughs> well, guess what? You gotta spend some energy when you smoke some crack. <laughs> We all have different reasons why we do the things we do to ourselves. It's just a matter of snapping out of it. And not even snapping out of it. It's like how long can you keep up drinking a half a bottle of vodka a night and be a a good member of society? Fuck being a member of society. Fuck that. Like drink a bottle of vodka every night and try to be proficient or efficient fucking try to be normal so as i'm driving i'm like this girl's going to work because well uh, unless she just copped and she's going back home but the good of me was like oh she's going to work her life sucks her husband beats her you know she's got a couple fat kids that she don't want fuck it do some pills if you're going to work and earning that shit Salute to you, you know, because that's what America's founded on. <laughs> Not really, but but how many people are actually getting high at work? Whether it's coke, weed, alcohol, there's plenty of people like, oh, I'm going on my lunch break, and then they're like, can I get a margarita or two? And I shoot her to go, please. They go home, they go to work, bust. Because life sucks. But life sucks even more if you're drunk and you're at work. Fuck that. I, listen, you give me a beer at work, which we are allowed to have a beer every once in a while in the kitchen. You know, like after a hard, long day, you're not working anymore. Just crack a beer open. But I can only imagine like having a beer at lunch and trying to go back to work it ain't happening. Fuck that. Give me another one and another one and another one. And then I get tipsy, then I go to sleep. But how many people use drugs that you might not even know? You see Timmy's mom, she's picking him up every day from school, dropping him off every day, going to soccer practice, you know, and all this and Meanwhile, she's like, oh, my hip is killing me. You know, John, can I want to make it a, a doctor's appointment? See, what can he do? And they, she goes to the doctor and she's like, Mrs. fucking Gladys. Uh, 
from 1 to 10, where's your pain? 11. So they give her some Vicodins or some Percocets or some, uh, what's the other one? I'm forgetting one. I know I'm forgetting one. And so now she's on pain pills. That's fucking pain pills. And I think that's how most of this shit happens. It's okay because the doctor gave it to me. You know, he gives you 90 pills. <laughs> Boy, if I could just pop it in back like Tic Tacs. Tic Tacs? Yeah, Tic Tacs. Uh, so she's having brunch, you know, while on some fucking Percocet. What? And that's just on the white side of things, I think. I think I don't I'm not sure I think that that's how it happens and that's how you get the whites addicted to heroin and meth and all the other illegal drugs actually I think that's how it happens and it has to be like that they can't just be like I'm gonna try heroin for the first time because I've never done any drugs no like they get a taste of some sort of opiate and they're like oh this is good it's like the insides of your body are hugging the outsides of your body. It feels so warm. Yes. Mommy, love me. And I think that's how it happens. But I got to work sober as a motherfucker on coffee. I was like, fuck. How many people? I was. I started asking myself, like, how many people are actually on a pain medication at work? And we don't even know. We don't even. We can't even tell. You can't even, you know what I mean? So, just because your doctor gave it to you doesn't mean it's okay. Are you really in pain? Is the medication supposed, like when you have a headache, you pop a couple ibuprofens, headache goes away. If you don't have a headache tomorrow, you don't pop a fucking ibuprofen again, unless you're a psychopath, you know? I don't like taking meds, nothing. I take vitamins and with a struggle, I'm like, I can't, you know, I would have been the worst fucking girl ever. I, uh, I gag, brushing my teeth, I gag. So, and, um, I don't like needles. I got tattoos, but I don't like needles. Like take my blood out. Oh no. I fucking get fucking lightheaded. I'm like, uh oh. Tattoos is different because it's just like a pain that you you know you're going to go through. So like, But blood coming out of my body through a syringe to do fucking no, thank you. And the, the amount of fucking money it costs. <laughs> I'm like a Jew motherfucker. I'm the brown Jew. I'm the Mexican Jew. You know? How much money am I going to dump into this hole that I'm going to go into? No, thank you. I'm good. And then how much money is it going to take to bounce back? So much. Speaking of bouncing back. Texas. Good old Texas. Boy. Come here. Come here. They're sending illegal migrants to Washington, D.C. Not Washington State, but Washington, D.C. And then a mind of a good back porch Mexican, I'm like, fuck yeah, free rides to anywhere you want. Why do you think they're volunteering? Why do you think they're like, hey, yeah, I'll go. I'll take me. Oh, yeah. Yo voy, señor. Yo voy. Yo, a mí. A mí, llévame. Because once they're there, it's not like you're going to put them in handcuffs again, are you? And if you're not, what do you think is going to happen? they are be like, where... Three bus loads of illegal migrants are missing. <laughs> well, that was a debacle, but it's not our debacle no more. That's Joe Biden's debacle. That's what the Texans are saying. You know, we don't want them here. We don't want them here. That's, I'm telling you, open borders? No. We don't want them here. God damn it. I done raised my kids in this land. This land is ours. Motherfuckers. I don't think he's motherfuckers. But they're making a big deal out of it. Everyone's on the news like, oh, blah, 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 the migrants, this, that. 
we're just catching a free ride, homie. And I say we because I'm, they're Max. Not all Mexicans. Let's say that. But like a good fucking back porch Mexican that I am. That's how they see it. You know, like, like what? You're going to give us a free ride. We don't have to fucking pay for nothing. You're going to give us food. Yeah, me, me. Take me. Me. I go in the front row. I go, you know, you don't have to tell me. I just go. Come on. And they're going to realize by the fourth trip, they're like, hey, what the fuck is going on? So the world is turning upside fucking down, basically, right? Because now you got one state sending people to another state with the other state agreeing with it. So now you got states fucking fighting each other we got california against florida and texas and like all this nonsense when we're supposed to be the united states of america boy america y'all forget but let me remind y'all go take your fucking fancy ass to el salvador and you'll be like uh can you take me back and all you fucking mcdoubles for the rest of my life because that is way better than what's going on over there but y'all fucking have it too easy. I think that's why most Americans are hooked on drugs because they don't have a real struggle. They don't like my mom, mommy and daddy were with me. I had a great childhood. There's those. And then there's ones that didn't have a great childhood because whatever reasons. But. It's almost like. People want you to care how they feel. They want you to be like, oh my God, I'm so sorry you had to go through that. The fucking world doesn't care about none of that. Why do we have to fucking acknowledge your feelings? Since when feelings are part of how we do things or how things are done, not how we do things. I don't do nothing. I fucking cook for a living and I barely do that. You know what I'm saying? There's days where my brain is like, can we just go to the park and fucking lay on the grass and look at the birds? <laughs> and I got to tell myself, no, you got to go back to work, bitch. You got bills. So. If you're going to do drugs, can you be responsible? Can you be a responsible adult? Just like. When you take out a car loan, you know you're going to fucking have a car payment, a car note, insurance, car licensing, tires, oil, all that. Are you responsible enough to take care of all the things that come with that? Could you do $400 a month of heroin? And that's it. No more, no less. $400 is your budget to fucking get high as a kite, whatever you want. Can you do that? I don't know. There's this dude out there, Doctor Doctor Car Hart, I think, black dude with the with the braids. He says he does coke, and he's a fucking professor. He said you'll have a great time with your wife, Joe, <laughs> which means you're gonna fuck like a bunny. <laughs> but could you do hardcore drugs and be, um? responsible I'm gonna say no I'm gonna say cuz if you don't if you have some demons <laughs> boy they're gonna take over they're like hell yeah they, they that demon is gonna push to the front of your brain and it's gonna be like this is what we're waiting for thank you thank you let's go burn that couch on the side of the street and throw it in the middle of the street and fucking watch it burn you know, or let's go break some windows or let's go fucking break, steal some catalytic converters. I don't know. Could you if you could hit me up on YouTube, be like, hey, I do. Uh, I'm a major drug user for 25 years and I still have a job, a pension, a house and a good family. I don't think you can, but. If there's one of you out there, right? Like those people, like I was, 
I'm amazed by like how we demonize cocaine. Look at those fucking big old ears. How we demonize cocaine. But meanwhile, in Colombia, Peru, you see all these kids chewing fucking coca leaves. And this girl is like, this will help you do your homework. <laughs> but it's a natural leaf. It has no, it hasn't been processed. So I think it's better. I mean, I don't think it's good for you, but like everything else, right? Just like it's a natural, uh, not psychoactive, but a natural, just like coffee, like a fucking, you know, like get me like a not. What is that word I'm looking for? God damn. A natural boost, you know, because it's just, it's what the compounds of the actual tree are in it. There's no chemicals. That's what I'm trying to say, but I'm retarded, so I can't put sentences together. So this girl's got a bag full of those coca leaves and she's got fucking you know, mouthful of them. She's like, nom, 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 and she's talking up a fucking storm. She goes, do you want to be happy? You get a bunch of these, put them in your mouth, chew them for a couple minutes, and you'll be happy as a motherfucker. I don't think you'd be happy, but you'd be really concentrated. You'd be like, uh, what are we doing? Uh, okay. Imagine if I talked to you guys like I was on coke. You know, I've seen plenty of people be on coke, and they're like fucking. Their jaws start moving. It's a crazy fucking <laughs> drug. I watch my uncles, my aunts, do coke. They don't think I know. I had this one uncle be like, "Hey, look away." I'm like, "Well, for what? I could see your reflection in the mirror, not in the mirror, but in the window of the car." And big old fucking bumps, and all of a sudden he's like fucking smoke, chain smoking, and talking and drinking beer while driving. <laughs> I was thirteen. He's like, he ain't going to know. At the time, I didn't know that he was doing coke. I just saw him putting shit up his nose, but I couldn't put it together. But by the time I got like 15, I was like, oh, that motherfucker was doing coke because somebody offered me coke when I was 15 in school here. I was like, what? We're here to study, homie. What do you mean trying to get high? In the bathroom? No, thank you. I'm okay. And it turned out that my buddy did it and it wasn't coke. He goes, my nose burned, and I haven't slept in three days. He did meth. <laughs> Poor fuck. He's like, I don't want to do that no more. <laughs> That's what he gave him, trying to be a fucking gangster, dog. But I put it together then, after like a couple years later, you know, I just thought he was like, I don't know what I thought, but I was like, it feels weird because he just fucking smoking cigarettes and driving and like in the middle, you know, there was a little truck, a one, one cabin truck had a cooler with beer and he was drinking. We were driving. He didn't give a fuck. So if I go to Colombia, you best believe I'm at least chewing on the leaves, at least, at least. You're already fucking walking on thin ice if you go to Colombia. You know, you might get kidnapped. You're like, I'm like, I got money. I ain't got money. But you're already walking on thin ice. You might as well throw a couple steps in there, you know? Dance a little bit. But I think that's. That would always be our problem. Abusing substances until we figure out. Because, like, most of us. I don't say most of us. I want to say a lot of the population have a problem with finding purpose. What is my purpose? You don't need a purpose, bitch. Just live your life. Enjoy it. What is the meaning of life? Well, who gives a fuck? You're already here. It's not like you're coming to life. You're already here. Enjoy it. Make the most of it. Laugh, cry, all the emotions. What are you talking about? Like, what is the purpose of my life? That your purpose of your life is to work at a fucking office max until you die. You don't like it? Do something else. You have a chance. It's not like you're dead. That's why I don't fucking understand. Like, oh, I'm such a... Stop it already. Just fucking stop. 
What is the purpose of life? Some people are born to be fucking bakers. And you have to fucking be okay with that. The longer you fight it, the longer it's going to take you to fucking be happy. Make a good life for yourself. Whether it's that pushing carts, being a baker, being a dishwasher. It helps you for, it doesn't help you to wonder what the fuck is the purpose if you're not willing to go out and seek your purpose. Wondering about it and crying to the world and like, oh, I'm non-binary. Oh, give me a cookie. It gives you no purpose. You're wasting time where you could be fucking going for it. Right? That's what we're tripping. We're making a trip to Colombia next year. Just so you know. So. The happiest people I've ever encountered are like. It radiates, radiates out of them. You're like, fuck, this person is going somewhere internally. Like they're different they're on a different road than a lot of other people. The happiness, the smiles, the the, the good attitude, all of that. And you know me, I hate fucking people with shitty attitudes. Right? Because if you hate your fucking job that much, quit. Reboot and restart. Find what makes you happy. Don't fucking make the rest of us have to deal with your shitty attitude. Just because you hate your life. Because you still live at your parents' house at 23. Or 28. 28, I still live with my parents. What? Get your shit together, lady. You know? So, it's all love at the end of the day. I'm just expressing my feelings. And nobody cares about my feelings. It's not even my feelings. It's my points of view. But with that, remind yourself to make it for yourself. No one's going to fucking come in and do your bed every morning. Nobody. It's up to you to do it. I sound like a goddamn guru. <laughs> not really, but what I'm saying is like be a grown up. Don't forget you wanted to be a grown up for this fucking for eternity now you're grown up make grown up decisions and fucking live your life and with that i leave you guys with the same old saying stay black motherfuckers because black don't crack <laughs>